Uh, this is Design Chat, uh, the best live weekly design discussion on the internet. Uh, design Chat number 18, uh, and running strong. Tonight we have a very cool special guest. We've got Dynamo, uh, illustrator uh, extraordinaire. Uh, did a lot of the Mad Men stuff that you see around the uh, promotion for the interwebs. Uh, MadMenYourself.com, uh, that's a lot of her work there, a lot of her uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, we've got a little bit of time here, so let's do a quick uh, Q&A. Uh, from anybody who wants to ask some questions real quick before we actually get the show going. Thank you. I might as well do a thank you. Thank you, Dinah, for coming on and bearing with us in our technical difficulties that we're dealing with today. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so her audio is a little touchy, so whenever she talks, she's going to put her face, in fact, her forehead, right against the camera. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. No? All right. Maybe not. Getting stuck bad enough. I'm going to rub it on a camera. Awesome. Um, so, uh, all right. ah! <laughs> I think this is going to be by far the most entertaining design chat to date. Uh, all right, well, first one, one of my questions is, uh, the work, the work that we see from you, you know, it's, it's in this very specific style, you know, it's this flat sort of 2D thing. Are you at home, you know, cutting out paper or is this illustrator? Do you start with pen sketches? What are you doing here? What's your medium? It's all Adobe Illustrator. Um, it just uh, I it, I don't sketch it out first for the most part. I use it like color forms, dropping shapes in, uh, uh, and more. For uh, I've had to submit uh, paper sketches, and it actually is like an extra step. It's kind of a pain in the um, because I usually don't do a pencil sketch if someone wants to see it first. And does it sort of like get in the way of your process if you have to do that? Does it interrupt your flow? Extra step. I mean, because then I got to draw it and scan it and put it up. It's just as fast for me to just do it with an Illustrator. I also use a mouse for Illustrator, which people think is I have a tablet. I don't use it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's all Adobe Illustrator. Awesome. And okay, so you've been. Uh, you know, doing the Illustrator gig, you know, that's kind of been your main gig, and you also do uh, uh, improv comedy at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Tell me a little about about that. Um, well, for people who aren't familiar with it, the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, is a group originally from Chicago that moved to New York about uh, now, like 13 years ago. They have a, a theater in New York, a theater in L.A., and they're opening a second theater in New York uh, later this year. Uh, but I've been with them since their first year, uh, or first year or two in New York, so I'm one of the few holdouts who's still in New York with them. But a lot of people, a lot of uh, up-and-coming comics who you've heard of now uh, originated from that theater, people like Paul Shear and Rob Corddry and Jack McBrayer, who's on 30. Um, someone says there's music playing in the background. Maybe it's just the music in their head or the music that they happen to be playing on the, their own browser. Yes, uh, or just the musical tones of my voice. Uh, but yeah, I've been with the Upright Citizens Brigade. I've done sketch, video, uh, improv, I teach improv, I direct improv, direct sketch, um, and I've been with them now for 11 years, uh, but I'm the official, unofficial designer for them doing flyers and print ads and some web and some illustration. I've done over 200 flyers for them. Um, I'm very ingrained into that community, both theaters, both L.A. and New York. So, That's that. So do you, like, do those worlds cross for you? I mean, do you find, like, like networking or something, or, like, do you, uh, are other people that you're involved with in the improv world also involved in, you know, advertising or creating f creative fields or anything like that? Do they cross for you? I think it's, like, a lot of, like, people who get their start as a designer in like a music community doing gig posters or or album covers it's just um you start doing design for the thing you love and because i'm i'm not a trained designer i'm not a trained illustrator they just needed someone to make flyers and that was i was already in the uh comedy the alt comedy community which is larger than ucb it's also some of the alt stand-up scene and uh um, so there's not a lot of networking here. There's a lot more like getting drunk and passing out at a theater is in a filthy basement of a grocery store. Uh, <laughs> <we> just... 
That's um, awesome. I, I guess but, it's networking, you know, on, on, on the other side of the fence, but uh, not regard, you know, nevertheless, it's still sort of like networking. I but guess. I would say, like, um, up until this Mad Men stuff started about uh, a year and a half ago, 90% of my clients are um, uh, actors or comedians or people one degree separated from that. So I've done a lot of off-off Broadway material, uh, which is through the alt. But yeah, I'm like 90% of what I do is for the um, comedy and theater scene in New York. Now, were you doing artwork? Were you doing like personal artwork before people started asking you and like commissioning you to do things? Yeah, I mean, I'll do a lot of one-man shows, which would be a portrait, a lot of wedding invitations. Um, I mean, I'm not, there aren't any eccentric millionaires hanging this in a get uh, almost every all the illustration I do is um, yeah, we're losing uh, some of the audio for you I need to lead in closer and be louder I think that's it um, all right so uh, so you also um, went to NYU Film School. Uh, where did that fit into the timeline of what you're doing with uh, the Upright Citizens Brigade and, and your your other illustrator work? Well, I actually went to Wesleyan University first, which is the alma mater of um, Mad Men creator Matt Weiner, ironically, uh, about 15 years later. Uh, but from there, I, I did transfer to NYU Film. And with I, I wasn't really into being in school or any kind of school. So I was, UCB was getting started at just about the time that I moved to New York. Um, I have to move even closer for you to hear me. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was doing UCB from the time I moved to New York, and I moved to New York to go to NYU in 1998. So I started performing and, and taking classes at the same time. So I was not in class very much. I was doing UCB and traveling to Minneapolis and Chicago and doing job there. Mm -hmm. um, I need to mention a couple things for people who are just sort of joining us. This is uh, Design Chat number 18. Um, we are uh, broadcasting live from Samata Mason in uh, West Dundee, Illinois. Uh, my name is Ryan McGovern. I'm an art director from, uh, uh, from the Chicago suburbs. And, um, you know, Design Chat is just a place to meet up every week and, and meet somebody interesting in the, in the design world and, uh, you know, another outlet for the uh, creative design community. So welcome everybody who's here uh, hanging out tonight. Um, we've also got designchat.info where you can go and see these shows um, after they live. Uh, I know I still uh, uh, I need to get last week's show up. Hi, Nick. Nick Vegas is here in the chat room. He was on uh, about a month ago. Uh, what's up, man? And... Uh, so we're going to do a little chat here. I know we started a little bit late. Thanks for uh, coming out, guys. And uh, and near the end, we'll do a Q and A with the uh, with the people from the, uh, the the chat lounge here. So, um, Dinah. All right. So yes. Hello. So you just finished doing the season two uh, Mad Men, uh, you know, illustrations. Season three. Sorry. Um, and, uh, and that what is, is what is spreading across desktop images and people's icons everywhere. Um, and, and you are internet famous now. How much has the internet famous sort of crossed into your daily life? Um, in what fashion? I'm not recognized on the street. Uh, right, yeah, if you walk into stores and be like, oh, that's Dinah. Well, <laughs> The weird thing is that a lot of people already knew me from a lot of people already knew me from UCB. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, people who knew me earlier, like a lot of people who do the blog for New York Magazine, uh, they they promote me. So they they actually there's an interview on the New York Magazine site where they interviewed people at the Mad Men premiere, and they they didn't have to give my name, but they did caption who I was when I was just a face in the crowd. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but other than that, uh, I get a lot of nice mail from people who like the show. I get a lot of mail from people who have mental problems who want to share them with me, uh, send me things that they've made. Um, so I'm very appreciative that people like it, and I'm very appreciative of the people who uh, understand social boundaries. The Internet is your living room, 
but just because you know who I am doesn't mean I know who you are, uh, or particularly want to be very intimate with you. <laughs> so this is a public announcement. Stop sending crazy stuff to Dinah, please. The, th the thing is that if you're really crazy, you're not aware that you're crossing a boundary, so I don't think any statement I'm going to make that I don't need to You know, uh, there are counseling services. I would I, I pass that on to them. Like, maybe you'd want to consider looking at that, not a person who draws pictures on Flickr. I think we're losing some audio again. I need you to lean in a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're totally hating this. This is driving me nuts. I know. <laughs> you just sit on top of your computer. I think that's going to be the best, <laughs> the best thing for us. What kind of chat is this if you want me to sit on my camera? <laughs> is that weird? Is it now me who's asking you and sending you weird things? It's a little sexual. It's uh, a little sexual. I crossed that line and this is a mashable uh, family safe discussion, so I think uh, I need to back up off is it, that was line. It, the fact that I would swear in a blue streak, you should have told me. I wouldn't have done it. All right, now you can't hear me anyway, so it doesn't matter. I can say <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so get, never getting We've been trying to get this to work for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I understand your frustrations. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so, it, have you do you do you do searches at all or like, you know, Wait, sort Google of a weird thing? Uh, you know, yeah, Mad Men yourself or things people say about it. You know, like I did a quick search the other day, and uh, somebody on Twitter was saying I, I love stuff like this. You know, I'm at, I, made, I made a Mad Men avatar even though I don't watch a show and now I'm going to start watching because of these Mad Men avatars and how cool they are. I mean, do you see any of that? Are you exposed to it? I see the first half. I don't hear the second half very often. What show is this from? This is cool. I don't watch the show. Um, <laughs> but they said that the, the viewership at the end of season... Sorry. The viewership at the end of season two was like one and a half million. The viewership for the first episode of season three, post Mad Men Yourself, and their other campaigns, was seven million. Oh my goodness. So that's that's more than one point five million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if you study math at all, you would realize that is a little more. Uh, so well, I'm gonna assume that's I'm gonna assume that's me doing that. Those additional uh, six million people. We're all because they made avatars. <laughs> it's all you. It totally is. Well, that's, I mean, that's, you are part of that picture. And, and you know, that's a huge success on your part. And, well, the, um, the, th the, th the thing I will say is that um, it's really bizarre that that was associated with Mad Men. And I've said it in other interviews as well. The <laughs> fact that um, Matt Weiner has been really supportive and then from his influence, AMC also, all, AMC already was really supportive when I was just doing it on my own on, uh, on uh, uh, Flickr already. But the fact that they embraced me so much, they like mentioned me in press releases, they really, um, sup like the, doing Mad Men Yourself, and then I did another project that was only for the sponsors. The fact that they're so supportive, and it's something that's very tangential to the show itself, I think shows that you know they're taking a risk and uh, and they just really like it I guess so uh, I'm I'm glad to be part of the Mad Men family and its legacy I'm also gonna be I was just contacted by the company that's making the season 3 DVD which will be coming out in like late 2010 that I'm gonna be a featurette on it so oh that's awesome there's a scoop for you uh, it's not negotiated yet but um, I'm going, to, I'm going to be doing a feature ad and they're going to include some of the art. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, do you know how many pieces to date that you've actually done? Um, how many Mad Men individual items I've done? Yeah, because if you can count them, separate them into separate jobs or something like that. Well, the ones that I did on my own that are just you know free for download to use as your desktop or, or your background on your iPhone, uh, I think that they're it's it's not precise because there's two versions of the same one or something, but it's, I think there are something like 65 of those. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the actual, the other stuff I've done, Mad Men yourself, the individual items that I made, not the ones that actually made it into the finished project, was, uh, was something like 
300 or between 300 and 500 pieces, but that ranges from things that are as minimal as a set of eyes to as complicated as a full background. So, uh, and in each item of clothing had like four or five variations. So that that was it was billed as 200 pieces. The actual number of pieces is anywhere between 200 and depending how you want to count them. And then the second project I did, uh, which I'll show you, you can't get this in stores, was was this item, Desktop Mad, desktop mad Men, uh, which they're giving away at various AMC uh, events online and in person as a prize. Um, but it's a uh, sticky vinyl toy where you get backgrounds and you stick people on it. Um, and just reading from the box, it has 11 figures, 30 objects, and four backgrounds, and I made all those. Um, but yeah, you can only get it uh, either if you were an advertiser on the show, you won a contest, um, or you know me. That's the only place you can get them. Oh, and eBay, just wait a couple months, they'll show up. Right. Um, but that was the second project that I did. So uh, do you have like a warehouse of those? Like, you have like a back bedroom stacked with a million of them well, that they, you can give they away? Only, uh, they told me that they only made um, like 2,500 of them, which, um, you know, it's a really, th I mean, it looks like you could buy it in a store. Um, I actually, I only have three copies, which I had to negotiate for, and my agent has three, and that's as many as I got. But you can, uh, you can, you can win them, look at AMC, maybe they'll have a contest and you could win one. Or uh, hang out with a, a guy who runs advertising for BMW, he's probably got a <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, are, were there any other products that were made from that? There are no, there are, they've always, uh, in every show, I think this is common practice for PR, they make a bunch of uh, premiums that they give to the high-end advertisers. So uh, there, there's a ton of Mad Men stuff, which you can't get, which the, the advertisers get is sort of a part of the, like, please advertise on our show. So there's, like, Mad Men pens and... Uh, Mad Men uh, cigarette cases and, and martini shakers and you know there's just tons and tons and tons of it which you'll eventually see on eBay um, or they become collector's items. Um, luckily the people at AMC uh, have gifted me about like 90% of it that exists which is a box under my bed uh, waiting for when I get so impoverished that I need to sell it on eBay to pay my You have the cigarette case the uh, the uh, AM the Sterling Cooper Amex the Sterling Cooper mess um, I have two copies of the calendar stuff like that so there's Mad Men stuff out there it's just uh, in stores there there's not really anything there's a, like, I think there was a calendar last year that's the only piece of Mad Men merchandise that's been made is it like Spaceballs do you have like Mad Men the flamethrower um, well I've I've tried to sell them on stuff. Um, that's really questionable that they wouldn't make. Uh, like what? So, but I'm really hoping they like. Uh, I wanted them to make a Bobby Barrett hand puppet, which is only funny if you've seen season two, uh, based on what Don does to her. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was what I'm, 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 I'm pushing for. Um, have yeah, you mocked on. one up? Have you like made one yourself? I do. I, I do have a drawing that I was gonna put up, but like I made a set of like Mad Men minifigs, a drawing of those, and said you should make you should make this. Um, that was like my main impetus for drawing it. So I'm really hoping they like partner with someone like Kid Robot and make Mad Men toys, because 90 percent of the people who watch Mad Men I think are uh, design people who have desks covered in designer toys anyway. Target audience, so. Yeah, if you got hooked up with like a Veer merchandise store or something like that, where they already have, you know, well, the the connection with the you know design community, they they would eat that up, I'm sure. Um, but they've been trying to license my art, or or Lionsgate has been trying to um, deal with me for the better part of the last 16 months, and it hasn't happened yet. So I think that the 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 will is there, but the contract isn't. So eventually. Eventually, there will be Mad Men merchandise. It's just taking a lot of entities involved in making the show, which I've right. been... Not my department. I just draw it. Um, so in addition to your stand-up and, and your illustration career... I'm sorry. Improv. 
um, thinking and clicking at the same time is very dangerous. So in, in addition to those two things, um, you also have a whole bunch of videos up on YouTube that you create with some of your friends. Um, for people who aren't familiar with them, can you kind of give us a background story on? Um, I don't know if any of you guys remember that Turner had a site called superdeluxe.com that folded about this time last year. Um, they, uh, I've been making videos for a while. We had, I had a deal with them. I did an eight-episode series with them called Cakey the Cake from Outer Space, uh, which is on Vimeo and YouTube and a bunch of other places. Um, so uh, I've been making videos since about 2005. Uh, mostly for a site called channel102.net, which has since sort of changed ownership and become channel101. Um, so uh, I've been making videos with uh, a bunch of people from the UCB community and the larger comedy community. Uh, so uh, I, did a, I had a deal with Comedy Central, which fell through, uh, so I made videos for them. I have a deal with Marvel Comics, which is still kind of stalled. Um, so uh, the weird thing is that this Mad Men stuff kind of popped up really suddenly. I consider myself a a, com a comedian first, not a designer, but it sort of follow where the interest is and just ended up, I've spent the last sort of full year doing Mad Men stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, it, you can go to uh, uh, look up Cakey the Cake from Outer Space or my, I think the account that it's on, uh, uh, YouTube is Mr. Ghost, uh, just MR, older stuff, and then, um, and then sort of the newer thing I did was a series called Welcome to My Study, which was, um, can you hear me? Am I, am I cutting out? No, you're good. Uh, Welcome to My Study was a series that I did with my, uh, frequent writing partner, Mitch McGee, which got him a, uh, a finalist position in the, uh, uh, Andy Kaufman Awards. They flew him to Vegas. Uh, so it's very uh, Andy Kaufman-esque, I would say, if you've never seen it. But we did a series of eight of those, which uh, were pretty popular, and then we did a month-long daily pod podcast from the character on the show. So um, so uh, check those out. And Mitch McGee on his own has done a bunch of videos, which I've helped on and, and been in. So uh, I'd recommend searching Mitch McGee. Uh, I'll type his name right now. Oh, I, I keep on forgetting to mention, uh, we've got the uh, design chat links, in case you haven't seen it, uh, popping up there, uh, you know, sending out any of the links that we happen to be talking about. Um, so usually we're pretty good about getting those out. And if you're, uh, if we're talking about something that you're not familiar with, you're looking for a link, just speak up and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll try to get that to you as soon as possible. Um, so, uh, but yeah, but if you, if you go to my site, there's a section of videos which will redirect you to where most of the videos we're talking about. Uh, that's the short. Um, so you were doing sort of your own personal artwork before you started, you know, doing this, you know, illustration for Mad Men. Is this, you could, you have a very sort of like specific style. Is this something, did your artwork before this look like that? You know, or how did, you, how did this style develop for you? Um, well, the, uh, I've been doing stuff that was sort of early 60s looking for a while, but sort of, the stuff that my clients always wanted to do, because I did a lot of stuff to, um, I did a lot of stuff for actors for the one man shows, and they'd want a very detailed portrait, that kind of cliched vector portrait that people do when they, when they trace a graph. So for a long time, that was the main thing that people were asking for. And I could, I could do that with the best of them, but it's not my favorite. Doing the cartoonier stuff just ended up being more fun. But like, um, before Mad Men, I was working with a band that had a sort of, early 60s sound, so we were doing that kind of style anyway, that kind of um, very, somewhere between Dan DiCarlo, Josie and the Pussycats, and like really stripped down like one color illustration that would be like sidebar and early Esquire. So um, sort of from that, and um, when Rich Summer, who's an actor on the show, asked to, asked me to help him with a Christmas card, I was like, oh great, let's, let's make it look like, um, sort of magazine illustration from the Mad Men era. And I went on, uh, you know, different groups on Flickr that had huge collections of sort of mid-50s to very early 60s illustration for magazines and advertisements. That was when I very pointedly was trying to rip it off in a very specific way and sort of look to it. So um, 
it's it's something that I think lends itself really easily to uh, vector. So that's now at this point, it's sort of what I'm known last for. So like 90% of what I do looks like this, just because mm -hmm. that's what people are looking for. How long does an illustration like this usually take for you? I mean, from concept, from the first idea, the first time that you talk about it to find it, you know, finished work. Um, well, the one behind you was the first really well-known one that I did. Um, and that one, when, when I was doing it unofficially, I had to have them up pretty soon after the episode aired or no one would check. So in some of those, I'd hammer them out in maybe five hours. But, um, uh, but the ones I'm doing now, the one I just did for episode one of season three, because that was, I had more lead time on that. That was probably maybe a good week working. Uh, it ranges. The really so, I, I've gotten the point though that I, I, I'm so used to working in this style. The very first one, the Christmas party I did, I was doing it. I was working in house, had time to kill, ended up spending almost two months. Um, but at this point, I could probably do that group scene behind you in maybe a day or two instead of two months. Depends. Uh, it's at a certain point, kind of, I go into automatic and just can just power through it. So uh, is this something that you do from home, or do you have like a, you know, a studio space that you do other things in? Do you do all your video work in the same space? That is a question for someone who is not familiar with New York real estate. I do it all in one shoebox sized apartment, everything. Um, I am in my apartment right now. Uh, I had to move the webcam out here because my bedroom is too small to actually shoot in. But I do 90% of my work in there. Um, yeah, it's all one very warm six-floor walk up in the East Village of Manhattan. Well, for all we know, you could just move that background and you're in a huge warehouse. You're in a, you know, 30,000 square foot space there. Again, someone who's not familiar with New York real estate. Guilty. Guilty as charged. Um, I like to ask a question once in a while. I'm a big fan of uh, Debbie Millman and, and her, um, her design radio show, Design Matters, and um, she always likes to ask uh, her guests, um, what, what's your first creative memory, the first time that you can remember doing something interesting or creative as a kid? Um, I was hit very hard on the head about 10 years ago, so it happened before high school. Get out of town. You're serious? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yes. Not one memory? Um, nothing specific. Um, creative memory though I mean like I always I always drew uh, my whole life um, I remember that uh, I was a very advanced student so I would get really bored in school and I would draw very lavish um, scenes I was particularly fond of word problems because there was a um, there was an uh, for some reason they allowed you could either like like five apples or if you didn't want to spell the spell the word apples you could draw one and I was like, well, I can certainly spell apples. I'm going to draw one anyway. And so I would make these elaborate pictograms on the worksheet. So I was fairly capable of saying what the word was, but it wasn't as interesting. Epically draw whatever the answer to the word problem was. So that, that, sounds like that, that was, early enough? So that sounds like it was sort of like a very dramatic event for you, and yet you had to start relearning some things. Was, was, was art something no, that I, came I, right away? Uh, what are we talking about? Art, I made it up. I, I was never hit on the head. That was a lie. <laughs> I, you're killing me. I totally took you seriously. I was like, oh man, I just, I just offended her. Oh, I shouldn't have gone there. <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah, I can't just keep up. You got everybody in the room too. They're like, oh my god, you had me going. I was sitting here sweating. I was like, oh, she's really mad at me. I shouldn't have done that. Um, I don't even know where to go after that. How about you, we just stick with that story and, and you just keep on going on that line? I could hit myself in the head right now if you wanted. That would be awesome. <laughs> Our first design chat injury. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So now that you've got sort of got the ball rolling and, you know, and, and you're really, you're, your, your work is out there. It's really well known. I, you know, I heard this quote um, a long time ago, and I'm, you know, I, I can't remember the exact person who said it, but it was to the, you know, uh, the, the point was, you know, a 
in architecture, a building doesn't exist until it's photographed. You know, and this is from the early 1920s or so. Um, so it doesn't matter what you've done, what artwork you've done, but it's until it gets noticed. And uh, you know, you're definitely at this point where you put that image out there. And I talk to all my friends in you know design world and that sort of thing. Anybody who's watching Mad Men or slightly familiar with it, and they recognize it. So you're sort of like at that point. It, what's the ne next step for you? I mean, what's the next big project, or what's the next thing you want to do? Do you want to continue doing this sort of illustration style? Um, right now, I'd like to make some money. I'd like to pay my rent. That would be good. Uh, I'm a struggling freelancer. I don't work in house anywhere. Um, but uh, coming up, uh, you know, from the attention that was on uh, even before AMC picked it up officially, I was still, um, you know, there was enough interest. I got asked. I got a lot of, of, of I guess, offers or, or initial inquiries, but not a lot of follow-up. So I was asked to work on four different advertising campaigns that didn't happen. And a lot of people, and I'm, not, I'm discounting the insane people I mentioned earlier, all of whom wanted me to make their chat room avatars or whatever. For, but um, since being on AMC, uh, I... And, and, and sort of immediately before it, I did a comp for a, a real Broadway show that's going up, which I haven't heard yet. That um, I haven't heard if I've gotten yet, but I was asked, I did a, a, a poster for a Broadway show that's uh, starting. You can't be losing me. Oh, you're uh, back. Okay, uh, so Broadway show, uh, fashion designer asked me to do stuff. Um, uh, which I haven't heard back yet either. Um, a couple of uh, uh, web startups have asked, have made inquiries. Is there a specific type of work that appeals to you? I mean, would you rather work with certain types of businesses or for other causes or something like that? I think we're losing some, some audio on you uh, right now. Um, so, all right, well, we're getting to about the 45-minute mark, so um, let's uh, change modes and uh, take some questions uh, and do some Q&A with the, uh, our live audience right now. So, hi, audience. What do you guys have to ask? Dead silence. <laughs> I'm not sure those glasses. <laughs> Smallest dollar amount project you were willing to take? That's a bad question. <laughs> yeah, broadcast to everybody watching. I will only do this. Who did the actual? Sure, I'll do that. I'll play that role. Who did the design on the actual website for making the avatars? That's a good one from Frank Stallone. How do you advertise yourself on being a freelancer? You know, that's a subject that comes up a lot with freelancing, you know, and, you know, a certain percentage of your time should be dedicated to self-promotion. Is that something you get into a lot? Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm 
Dina, DD Dana was asking, how has Twitter helped you? I'm sure you've got tons of communication going on from that. Um, how long have you been on Twitter and how, I mean, that's definitely how I found you. Um, how has that gone for you? Mm -hmm. Are you in are you on any other social media sites like Facebook? Do you have a lot of traffic on there? I think a lot of people are sort of discovering that now as, as social media and Twitter are, are, are maturing where, you know, there's, there's, there's a line you have to choose to be on either side of. It's, you know, do I make this account for a personal account or do I make this for my business account? Who do I talk to on this one? Who do I not talk to on that one? And, you know, what, what's the best way to do that? I don't think everybody's quite figured it out yet, but there are, I've seen some articles recently of people switching modes where like this one, I'm only going to talk to my friends. This one, I'm only going to be about business. And I deal with that a little bit also because, of, like on Twitter, I've got two identities. I've got Design Chat, I've got Hoopajoob. So Hoopajoob is me. Hoop, you know, anything will go out through there. Sometimes I'll tweet. If it has to do with the show specifically, it'll go out through both. But there is that sort of like weird line of, you know, I'm not sure how to interact with people on this one versus that one. Yeah, this is a subject that we, we, we tend to sort of harp on the social media side here once in a while, you know, because this is, you know, it's, it's why we're having this discussion today because of these social media tools that we, you know, we have this channel where we can talk about design, we can talk about um, creative endeavors and, and sort of have design community and creative community come together once in a while and, and just discuss these things where we, we wouldn't have had these opportunities before. So, 
we definitely do get on the subject of, you know, people are, um, there's a learning curve. There, there's sort of like a social boundary learning curve that people are bumping into again. Um, now that, you know, they're, they're not really coming out of their houses, but, you know, they're not sitting alone in the dark just watching the tube all day and getting a one-way feed. Now people can talk back to them and the social, the social boundaries are being crossed of what's, what's right, what's wrong, what's offensive, what's not offensive. And, you know, I think those lines are starting to be blurred a little bit. And there's good and bad, you know, there are good things that are, uh, that are coming of that, but also sort of some really odd and bizarre things also. Hence, people sending you weird stuff that you don't want. Right, yeah. And now we're just discovering that, you know. <clears throat> All right, well, um, I think we're coming up to the end of our chat here. Um, so let me uh, get into my long list of thank yous. Um, first of all, Dinah, thank you so much for coming on tonight. It was awesome to finally meet you. And after get over our pump of technical difficulties, thank you for hanging out with us uh, through that. Um, and I'm sorry I had to put you through that. Um, and also thank you to uh, Samana Mason for letting us uh, broadcast from here. Uh, very cool guys here. Look them up, SamanaMason.com and at Samana Mason on Twitter. Um, they have the CUSP conference coming up September 16th, um, which is going to be in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I know I'm forgetting, th uh, thank you Mashable, of course, for letting us broadcast from their Mass Chat Lounge. Um, this is Design Chat. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this is Design Chat number 18. Um, hopefully, Design Chat 25 will have sort of a tweet up, um, um, exciting party thing here. Uh, we, we're still working out details, so pay attention uh, to my tweets from Design Chat and who um, <laughs> you for that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this has been this has been very cool. Um, uh, check out designchat.info for um, the shows. Uh, about a week after they pop up. I know I'm late on the last one. Look for Mad Men uh, paraphernalia so you can send money to Dinah or just send money to Dinah, really, I think is a good route. Send her money. Because um, her work... Right, exactly. Because um, her work is awesome and uh, she should have a lot of money. Um, so thank you again, Dinah. I think we're going to wrap it up and hit uh, stop broadcasting here. So from Design Chat, thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.